So now we're going to continue section 7.1 and look at a couple of other examples where we're going to verify trigonometric identities. So we'll start with the identity tangent squared x divided by 1 plus secant x is equal to 1 minus cosine x divided by cosine x. Now our directions tell us to start with a more complicated side. And it's not really clear in this case which side is more complicated. And so in this case, you were just going to randomly select a side and try to start working on the problem. I'm going to begin with the right-hand side of the expression. Now, I know that my guidelines tell me to write everything in terms of sines and cosines, which is already done. And so now I'm looking for anything algebraically that I can do to try to simplify this expression. One thing that comes to mind is that I can break this up into two separate fractions. It's almost like we have come up with the common denominator and combined the fractions, and now I want to sort of undo that. So I'm going to write the 1 over cosine x, and then I'm going to have cosine x over cosine x. Now when I look at 1 over cosine, I know that that is equal to secant. Now normally I wouldn't put a secant into a problem if we we're asked to do sines and cosines, but we notice that our example, our answer does have a secant in it. So I'm going to go ahead and 1 over cosine I'm going to write as secant. And then we know that cosine over cosine is going to equal 1. So that simplifies things quite a bit for me. Now I'm keeping an eye on where I want this to end up, and I notice that I want a fraction with a denominator of 1 plus secant x. And so I think what I'm going to do is, keeping in mind that this has a 1 right now, I am going to multiply by 1 plus secant x. And remember, if you do it to the bottom, you also need to do it to the top. And the only reason I'm doing that is so that I will then get the denominator here that I want. All right, so let's look at what we have when we do that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply across on the top. So first times first is going to be secant times 1. That's just going to be secant. The outside terms will be secant times secant, so that's going to be secant squared. My inside terms will be a negative 1 and a positive 1, so that's going to be minus 1. And my last terms will be negative 1 times secant, so negative secant x. And on the bottom, I'm just going to have 1 plus secant x. Now, if I look at my top, I see that this secant and this negative secant will cancel. So that's going to leave me secant squared x minus 1 over 1 plus secant x. Now, remember that we do have an identity that says that the tangent squared plus 1, I'm just going to jot this down over here, tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. And so if I take that identity and I subtract 1 from both sides, that's going to give me tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x minus 1. And so this secant squared x minus 1 that's on the top part of my fraction over here is going to be equal to tangent squared. And again, this completes the problem because we started with the right-hand side and we've ended with the left-hand side. Okay, let's try another example. We want to verify the identity cosine uh, theta times cotangent theta divided by 1 minus sine theta minus 1 is equal to cosecant theta. So starting with the more difficult side means that I'm going to start with the left. So I'm going to write the left-hand side down. 
And remembering that my guidelines tell me to write everything in terms of sines and cosines, I'm going to do that to begin with. So remember that cotangent, that we have an identity that says cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. And so I'm going to substitute that in for the cotangent. So we'll have cosine, and then we're going to substitute in cosine divided by sine for the cotangent, all over 1 minus sine theta, and then minus 1. So multiplying on the top, we're just doing our algebraic manipulations now. Cosine times cosine will be cosine squared over sine. And then we have our denominator. And we have the minus 1. Okay, so I know that when I have a fraction and I'm dividing by another quantity, that I keep the top part the way it is. I do the reciprocal of the bottom, and I multiply. So this is going to look like keep the top, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. So right now this bottom is over 1. We're going to flip it over and multiply. Okay, and we still have the minus 1. Let me get that one in there. Hold on just a second. All right, so that is 1 minus sine theta. Okay, so now when we multiply, on the top we're going to have cosine squared. And on the bottom I'm going to have sine theta times 1 minus sine theta. Now again, I'm not going to multiply that out unless I get to the point where I realize that I need to. Now, we saw in a previous example how we could often take this identity and rearrange terms and use that to simplify something further. So I'm looking at this cosine squared on the top here and I'm looking at my identity, and I'm considering what would happen if I subtract the sine squared from both sides. And so that would give me an expression for a cosine squared in terms of sine. So cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And so I'm going to plug that in. So instead of that cosine squared, I'm going to put 1 minus sine squared theta. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to a new slide just so that we'll have some room. I'm going to rewrite on the next slide where we left off. So 1 minus sine squared and on the bottom we have sine times 1 minus sine theta and we have minus 1. Okay, so that's where we left off. Let's go ahead and continue with this. If you notice on the top part of the fraction, the 1 minus sine squared, is a special factoring problem. It is a difference of two squares. One is a perfect square and sine squared is a perfect square. So remember from your algebra that a difference of two squares can be factored very easily into one minus sine and one plus sine. So I'm going to do that on the top. I'm going to factor that. And again, I'm going to leave the bottom as it is. So when I do that, you can see that the 1 minus sine is going to cancel with the 1 minus sine in the denominator. And so that is going to leave me 
1 plus sine over sine minus 1. Now at this point, I'm still doing my algebra and still doing my manipulations. I'm going to try to go ahead and make a common denominator out of these two. Um, remember that if you have a fraction that's going to simplify to 1, it would have had the same thing on the top as it had on the bottom. So another way to write 1 would be to write sine over sine. Remember again, all we're doing is we're writing a different form of the 1. So a fraction that has the same thing on the top as the bottom is equal to 1. This allows me to move these two fractions together since they now have the same denominator. And when I do that, I see that my positive sign and my negative sign will cancel, leaving me 1 over sine. And we know that 1 over sine is equal to cosecant. And again, this is the completion of the problem because we have now turned that initial complicated side into cosecant theta. Okay, so we're going to look at one more example right at the end of this section. Uh, this example is a little different. We're not doing a trigonometric identity that we're trying to verify, um, but you will see a few of these in your homework section, so I wanted to go through it with you. Uh, the example says that we want to use the substitution sine theta is equal to x over 2 to write square root of 4 minus x squared as a trigonometric expression, and we are to assume that our angle lies between 0 and pi over 2. So to begin this problem, and this problem is a little confusing the way they have it written, I'm going to go ahead and draw an x and y axis, and I'm going to draw this angle between 0 and pi over 2. So remember here's 0 and here's pi over 2, and so I'm going to come in and in red here I'm going to draw a standard position angle. And this is going to be my angle theta. Now, I do have some information about the sides of the triangle sort of hidden in this trigonometric function of sine. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a line down and make a triangle out of it and use this to identify two of the sides. Remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we know that the opposite is going to be x and the hypotenuse is going to be 2. So what about our other side? Well, the other side, we could use Pythagorean theorem to come up with that other side. So let's do that real quick. So I would say x squared for one of my legs. Um, I might call this one b plus b squared is equal to 2 squared. And so x squared plus b squared is equal to 4. We're going to subtract the x squared from both sides, which is going to give me b squared is equal to 4 minus x squared. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give me b is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. And so you can see that that's what we're being asked to write as a trigonometric expression. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in here for my missing side, and that completes our triangle. Now, let's look at what they want us to do. So they want us to do a substitution and write for the square root of 4 minus x squared as something that involves a trig expression. So what we want to realize is that if we take our, our sine theta is equal to x over 2, and we solve that for x. So in other words, what I'm asking us to do is to get x by itself, and we could do that by multiplying both sides by 2. So therefore, 2 sine theta is equal to x. So we're going to take this 4 minus x squared underneath the square root that they're asking us to write as a trig expression, 
and we're going to plug in for our x value. So we know that x is 2 sine theta. So I have 4 minus. I'm going to make my substitution 2 sine theta, and I'm going to square it. Now let's do what we can do to simplify this. So we're going to have 4 minus 4 and then sine squared theta. So we're squaring the 2 inside the parentheses and also the, the sine theta. Now, notice that both of these have in common, and we're just going to do some basic simplifying here, but they both have in common a 4. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the 4 to the front. Pulling a 4 out of a 4 leaves me a 1. Pulling a 4 out of 4 sine squared leaves me sine squared. Now, I can actually take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so that's going to come out to the front. And we're going to be left with 1 minus sine squared underneath the square root. Now, remember that we played with this identity quite a bit already in the sense of using that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1 and manipulating with that identity. So I'm going back to that same idea. We've seen it, I think, three times now. So I need an expression that says 1 minus sine squared, which means I'm going to need to take this expression and subtract the sine squared from both sides. So that tells me that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. And so now I can come down here and I can plug that in. And so instead of 1 minus sine squared, I can write cosine squared theta. And having a single term there, when I take the square root of cosine squared, the square root and the square kind of undo each other and leaves me with 2 cosine theta. And so this will be our answer. They asked me to determine an expression for the square root of 4 minus x squared that had trig values in it. And that's what we've done right here.